Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Steel Mod Type Run of EV Emerald. Last time, we beat Team Aqua at Mount Pyre. Now we're finally going to see what's on the other side of this route before we do a bit of backtracking. Starting over here. There's a couple trainer battles and some items you can get your hands on. Starting down here, you get a rare candy. Up here is one of the trainers. Steel's super effective to rock types, so I guess in Pokemon, Scissors beats rock. You should feel sad. I'm pretty sure I already know what the outcome is, boy. Alright. Oh, and one more thing that happened last time. I evolved Matang into Metagross. And taught Shadow Ball. Now here at the double battle. And there's that battle taken care of. And over here is a PowerPoint up. Moving back the other way, we get to a berry patch. And the girl on the left, if you have a grass type in your party, will give you the TM for Giga Drain. I do not, so I can't get it. Then again, I don't think any of the Pokémon that I can use in this run would be able to learn Giga Drain in any way, so... Well... Moving on. Now, on the route to the west, you'll get to a point where... you basically have a couple different paths you can take. Which means that if you want to get everything that's possible to get on this route, you need to go through it at least twice start up here first. But before we jump down that ledge, let's do this battle over here. Also, fun fact, the Hexmaniac sprite in the international releases is censored compared to the original Japanese one. I can't remember exactly how, but I think... I think the, Jap the original Japanese version is supposed to look more obviously possessed, kind of like the mediums in Gen 1 and its remakes. Because I do know the, the sprites for mediums were censored in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Level up!
There you go. And over here is another hidden item. A Hyper Potion. Anyways, before we move on, I guess I'm gonna swap out... Agron. This is a trainer up ahead where that might be important. Moving on, we jump down here... ...and get interrupted by a wild Pokémon. Fuck off, Poochie Anyway, sorry about that rude interruption. There's a Super Repel up here. Here's an Elixir. Nah. Yeah, I just don't want all of my episodes to be like half an hour long moving forward. So that's why I sometimes skip a lot of the WoW battles unless, you know, I find a shiny. Which I've already done once, I could find it again, you never know. Although, I don't... I don't think in any of these playthroughs I've had more than one shiny encounter. Unless the hack increased the shiny odds, or they were scripted encounters. And no, I don't count, like, Liquid Crystal, for example, because te because the Red Gyarados is a scripted encounter, just like it is in Gen 2. Unless you, of course, encounter another Red Gyarados, which is absolutely possible. Oops, meant to use headbutt there. Ha! Nope. Yeah, that's the other thing I'm gonna do from now on is... Anytime an opponent uses Protect, Detect, or Fake Out, I'm just gonna skip through their turn because... Well... Those moves basically exist just to waste your time. As I've discussed in prior episodes. And there goes the battle. Now, continuing from where we left off, we're going to take the North Road this time. This guy is probably the toughest trainer on this route, right here. <clears throat> he has five Pokémon. It's a pretty well-rounded team, although, of course, their levels aren't very impressive, but... Well, at least compared to what I've got. That's why I switched out Skarmory for Agron, because it might have Magnet Pole, and of course, Thunderbolt hurts. You would. No, oh, fuck you. Okay, you know what? If you're gonna be that way, I'm just gonna heal it right, right now, because... Fuck your pair of hacks. Yeah, I don't think so. And here comes Shift Tree. Yeah, 
Yeah, you're, as you can see, even with a massive level advantage, his Pokemon are tanky enough to not go down in one hit. Anyways, moving on. Of course, you can also jump back down there, or you go up here. And this will take us back over to the route where the Berry Master was. You get a calcium here. And this takes you back here. Anyways, we'll cut ahead and go take the other route. And now this time, we're going to take the Southern Road. So, off camera, ended up in a couple more wild battles. And Aggron leveled up again to level 45. So now, I've swapped it out for Magneton. Okay, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah, that's what should have happened the first turn, but no, it has to use Protect. Just to waste your time. As I remarked in a prior episode, a lot of Pokémon in the mid to late game seem to have movesets that, well, some a lot of the more common Pokémon you'll see, like Laron, Hariyama, stuff like that. Fuck you, Electric! Yeah, things like that. They just use Roar, Protect, Detect, or, you know, shit like that. Whirlwind. They do it just to waste your time. It's pointless. Because it doesn't change the outcome of the battle. It just slows things down. Couple that with how long the various routes get late in the game and how many trainers there are. And, yeah, this is one of my biggest complaints about Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is the late game is a slog. It's very tedious. Of course, they pad it out because... Otherwise, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald are actually really short. So, that might explain why they did it. They knew the game was too short, so like, eh, let's add a bunch more trainers and other stuff just to, you know, make it take longer for players to get through this section. Oh, fuck off. Of course, Later games, starting with the following generation, Generation 4, just rely a lot on railroading, which is even more annoying. Gen 4, they basically force you to take the longest possible route to get to anywhere in the Sinnoh region. But well, that's the other really annoying thing with Roar and Whirlwind is it forces it sometimes forces your HM slaves in the battle even if you don't want to use them. Anyways, rant over. Moving on. You get a revival herb. And I think there's an item in here. Nope. All right, gank Makahita first, because oh fuck off, yeah, because like I said, Makahita, Ariyama, that is one of those Pokemon that I'm convinced has its move set custom tailored to waste your time. Because at this stage in the game, it'll often know Whirlwind, Knock Off, and Fake Out, which. Knock off and fake out 
barely do any damage. Just because, well, I think we'll... And also, you can only use Fake Out once without having to swap out. Then Whirlwind just forces you to switch. And a lot of trainers have them. Although that said, I will say this, the shiny versions of those Pokémon are actually pretty cool. I did encounter a shiny Hariyama in one of my monotypes. I can't recall which one it was exactly. It was in Victory Road, that's all I remember. And we are now back at this end of the route. And now we're back here in Lobberidge Town, because, well, this is where we need to go next for the story. There's the road I built. So we gotta go up here, because... Oh, well, actually no, we could have taken the cable car, I guess, but... We'd have to come up this way anyway. So... Get up here. So, remember that Team Magma Grunt? Now we have the Magma Emblem. That unlocks that door, but we're not going to go there just yet, because there's something at the summit that I uh, didn't cover before, but I probably should have. Yeah, for some reason you appear here again. Again, the coder who made this is not very good. Actually, let's get some lava cookies real quick. Yeah. Good thing to get as many lava cookies as you can. I mean, they're basically full heals that cost a third of the price. So, get them all you can. But the reason I came up here is there's a bunch of new trainers. After you clear out Team Magma. Frankly, it's a bit late for me to take them on, considering the levels they're going to be at. But, eh, I might as well, just for the extra cash and... Well, some of them you can rebattle later anyway. And yeah, ground types is the only reason that I still have Sonic Boom on this Pokemon. Although eventually you'll learn Tri Attack, which, of course, normal type needs its physical in this generation. It's not going to do as much damage as it would otherwise, but it's better than nothing. It's certainly better than Sonic Boom. Well, speaking of Tri Attack. Plus, it has a rather interesting effect that, in that it can paralyze, burn, or freeze an opponent at random. I think it's a 10% chance of each occurring. Now, beware of the gambler's fallacy. That doesn't mean it's a 30% chance overall of it inflicting a status condition. It means that 10% of the time, it'll inflict a status condition. And when it does, it's one out of three, that'll inflict a specific one. And that's it. And this is one of the trainers you can rematch later, if I recall correctly. Good thing they're at a low enough level that neither of them really know the moves that they tend to spam to stall you out. Otherwise, that could have been a little more annoying. Ooh. 
Anyways, moving on. And here we have the last set of trainers up here. <clears throat> if I recall correctly, the hiker isn't normally here in, in Ruby and Sapphire. Again, I think that guy was added to increase the number of double battles you can have, because, again, one of the big complaints about Ruby and Sapphire was, although it introduced the double battling mechanic, it was rather underutilized. And that's it. So we are going to cut right here, and I will see you in a couple minutes. Oh, and we can register this guy in the Pokemon app. And now we're back here. We enter, and here's the Team Magma hideout. Anyways, I think this is a good place to cut for now. Next time, we're going to be taking on Team Magma and kicking them out of here. If you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page. We'll see you all next time.